Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to On My Black Packers Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Wall. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying this, hit the subscribe button on your YouTube channel.com. Process to perform. Boy, that came out pretty bad. If you're enjoying the show, hit the process to perform YouTube button. Subscribe, rate, and review. This show is presented by betonline.ag. BetOnline is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest uh, odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, football, esports, and more. BetOnline continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting in your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. So head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get into the action. Remember, use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That means if you put in $100, it will give you 50 extra dollars you'll be betting with. That's right, $150. So bet online where the game starts. You'll notice that Amon uh, Green is not joining us today. He's licking his wounds. Him and uh, Coach Matt Rule of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, who got taken down in a big way to Coach Prime and the Colorado. Is it is it almost impossible to not root for Colorado right now? And everything that, that that Deion Sanders is doing over there, unbelievable job. I, I haven't been interested in college football in probably a decade, and it's it's box office, man. You must watch TV. But more importantly, to the point of this show, the Packers roll the Bears after all the offseason talk. After all the Justin Fields, this is what's going to happen. Oh, if they're all the, you know, how how are the Packers going to look with this? You know, eight round, eight first round draft picks and on the on the defense, how we're going to look with the Jordan Love era. We roll them 38 to 20. Jordan Love comes out and statistically has, you know, arguably a better game than his predecessors. 15 for 27, 245 yards, 245 yards passing, three touchdowns, no picks, sacked only one time, two to Dobbs, one to obviously to Aaron Jones. We'll talk about later. Justin Fields, on the other hand, and listen, Let's just start by saying, being really honest, Justin Field is a ridiculous talent. Like, there's some stuff he does on this tape that you just don't see from other players in this league. But he is, in every way, shape, and form, whether it's the play calling, the personnel, the uh, the, the groceries that they've bought, the way they've developed them, every, everything, every Bill Parcells uh, anecdote I can throw in there. He is overwhelmed right now in a in a bad situation. They should hit reset. They should hit reset in January or something. But th- this was a bad performance by them by any standards. Twenty fourth for thirty seven, uh, two hundred sixteen yards, one touchdown, one interception, four sacks. He had nine carries for fifty nine yards. And you know, it's like, you know, this is what I love about football, and what I love about what's happened to football. If you look at the statistics last year, I think the Bears were maybe the top team in the league rushing. Well, it wasn't because the offensive line was good. It wasn't because it, Khalil Herbert was good, uh, good back for them last year, certainly. But it wasn't because of anything else than Justin Yards, Justin Fields, excuse me, ran for over, I think, 1,100 yards last year. And they do, he does that in large part because he's bound to get hit. You know, if he doesn't, if he stays in one spot for more than two seconds, 2.25 seconds, he's going to get hit, you know, 10, 12 times a game. They're just not very good at important parts on the field. We saw this actually all weekend. I know I'm getting a little bit off topic, but you know, if you're a general manager, and they did this a little bit with drafting the kid out of Tennessee at right tackle, but if you're a general manager and your number one priority, because I, I heard I heard Greg Olson say this on the, tel, on the telecast. He said, "Well, you know, they, were, they we need to get we need to fix our secondary. Well, they did fix their secondary. They're just young, but they drafted well, and we need to fix our defensive line." But we're going to fix the linebacking core first. And I said this on the show last week in the preview show. It doesn't matter how much money you pay the linebackers. It doesn't matter if you bring in Tremaine Edwards or Tremaine Edmonds, TJ Edwards. You got rid of Roquan Smith, who, by the way, I watched the full uh, Baltimore Texans game. Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen are a problem. Roquan Smith is the real deal. He might be the best linebacker in the league. But it doesn't matter how much money you spend on the linebackers if your defensive line is that poor. The offensive line of the Green Bay Packers, for the most part, held up great in pass protection, opened some lanes in the running game, and it really just comes down to we are our players, the Green Bay Packers players, are better than the Chicago Bears players. I'm not going to sit here and say the play calling is dynamic or as is where it needs to be to play some of the top two teams in the NFC right now, but they'll they have time to improve. Because we're so good on 
defense against teams like that. But I think from a talent standpoint, I think Goody, Goody's done a really good job of putting together a really good team. Um, Aaron Jones led it both rushing and receiving. Aaron Jones was the star of the game, especially when things aren't quite getting figured out after that first drive in the first half. Uh, they, they come out in the second half. I think Matt LaFour at halftime is going like, yeah, I know we got to give him the ball. It's like, well, this is kind of what we're talking about, Matt. He had the ball five carries in the first drive. He scored a touchdown relatively easily. And then it's like, do we not want to hand him the ball anymore? And so they come out in the second half, they feed him the ball, I think, five, six times. And obviously it makes a you know big screen pass down the down the sideline we saw and then ends up diving for a one yard touchdown later on after two carries from AJ. But Aaron Jones had 86 yards and a touchdown, receiving 40, 41 yards on 4.6 yards per carry. Uh, from a rushing perspective, something interesting because we're going to talk about the dominant domination of maybe some of the lines and whatnot, but the Packers only rushed for 92 yards on 2.9 yards per carry. You know, and so there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. We're running sideways a lot. AJ Dillon, I think AJ Dillon gets absolutely screwed over sometimes when you watch the way they start the game with this kid and whether it's mistakes being made or just plays that don't make sense given his body type and then we're going on you know third and one or fourth and one or whatever we do, we do the the jet sweep look and you're just going run the ball downhill with Aaron I mean this is pretty standard stuff guys but anyways it was a good win I want to get into some tape but let's preface the tape with I have three takeaways number one takeaway first of all my player of the game I'm just, I, I want to get this out of the way Darnell Savage. Darnell Savage, who we have talked about on this program for months, maybe years, as what are they going to do with him? Didn't work out at corner. They're going to move him to safety. He's undersized. He runs a 4-3-8. How is this going to work? He set a physical tone from the jump yesterday. He had 10 tackles, five solos. He just played out of his mind physical. He made he ran through Chase Claypool, Claypool's wannabe blocks. This kid was physical from day one. So happy to like you're happy for the kid, Darnell Savage. You're happy for the man because he's had kind of a rough go of it, and you're putting him in this position. We don't know what's gonna. He couldn't have played better. I mean, he just was so physical. I just loved watching it. Uh, had a tackle for loss. The D line on our team showed up. Kenny Clark, you know, is going to play. His, he might not have the stats. You just know what kind of player he is. Rashawn Gary coming back is what a shot in the arm. That guy is unbelievable. Preston played a great game, run and pass. Had some good pressure in the passing game that you, you, you might may or may not notice. Devontae White showed up. He had a sack and a half, but he really was in the backfield running games with Kenny, running games with some other guys, Wooten. He did a good job showing up. And I think that's a huge, huge deal. Van Ness was there and playing with effort. I know he had an effort sack on the keep pass. That's great. You know, the it goes back to when you have that many good players, you draft that many good players on the offensive defensive line, like you're just going to be better than the other team unless they have just some magic potion of this is how we develop talent. We do it better than everyone else. And – Right now, the Packers' offense, takeaway two, the Packers' offense is, is going to have to lean on Aaron Jones until Christian Watson comes back healthy, until we kind of figure out what kind of identity the team's going to be with Jordan Love, what Matt wants to call versus what he should call, um, basically until they find their rhythm. And that's going to take a, a number of, I think, iterations. But you see you have a very, very good left side of the offensive line. That right tackle is that time played very well. You have some young guys that were at the point of attack by numerous times in the game. We're talking about Musgrave, Tucker Craft. We're talking about uh, DeGuara at the fullback position. You have guys that will mix it up, that are willing blockers. So you got to lean on this kid, man. He is unbelievable. Darren Jones is a, a star in this league. He just doesn't get enough credit because he doesn't get the carries. And then, you know, I just said it before, but my third takeaway was just watching the Bears and – you know, I'm a, I'm a huge football fan. They're just not very good in some areas. They're procedurally they're not very good. Structurally they're not very good. Technically they're not very good. You know, athletically they're not going to beat some guys. They're very very good in some. I mean, T.J. Edwards, Trayman, they're great players. You cannot make up for the lack of talent in front of you. Um, let's check out the tape and then we'll get into these areas of opportunity. So we start with the first the uh, the first look of the game. Bears get the ball. And and listen, I think everybody's talked about this. I'm not the only one, but certainly the, you have to have the expectation that the Bears are going to try to use these backs in some kind of screen game because they're worried about the, the Green Bay Packers pass rush. Um, 
you know, certainly they play zoned coverage here. And, you know, ideally if you're an offensive lineman, you want to see man coverage here because that means Quay's married up. And if we get, if, if Patrick gets rid of Quay, then from a Bears perspective, like this is Katie out the gate, look at Kenny Clark trying to make this play. And then you just love, I, I just really kept this in because Jair Alexander has become one of my favorite players in the league, man. This guy just, he just continues to back up everything he does. They go third and one, don't get it. And in a kind of a head scratching play here, I know you're trying to set the tone. You're trying to show what kind of team you are, but fourth and one here. And he jumps over the pile as if this would even count. This isn't, it's not how football works. This isn't the end zone. Um, interesting that he jumped, especially when we have like the rugby scrum thing that has never been stopped. I mean, you know, every other team's using it. I even see in practices, they have rugby scrum machines now to practice it. But anyways, first and 10 for the Packers. And I think Myers gets beat here. Uh, it gets blown off the ball by, by 97. Uh, it's just center's a really tough position. This is probably their best interior defensive lineman. You need to be able to maintain uh, ground. You need to be able to stay on the line of scrimmage. If you do that, it's a win. Um, bad way to start the season for you know for AJ or for J Jones, obviously, but really for for Myers. Then we go here. You know, I don't know if we're trying to show that uh, you know this isn't the Aaron Rodgers offense, so we're going to run a, a speed option, but it just doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. I mean, maybe everybody gets to touch the ball in the first two plays. Um, this is why it doesn't work. Bakhtiari just takes a bad angle. He gets stuck. And, you know, Bakhtiari does so many good things in, in the passing game. And this happens to every single player on the field at one part or another. But this is one of those deals where with, with Edmonds, you just don't know where he's going. And Bakhtiari just takes an angle that's tough. And so now they don't really have – they have the spill player that they want to play off of um, on the corner, excuse me, the edge player. But the spill player takes over because of Edmonds gets out there. So it becomes a problem. So we go to third down. I think Dobbs runs a, they have a double slant up on the, on the bottom of the field. And they're really just trying to make sure this guy freezes or turns inside. If he freezes or turns inside, you go to Dobbs on the outside because we're playing off coverage, easy pitch and catch for the first down. Great job by Jordan Love executing on third down. I know it was talked about on the tele, on the television copy all day yesterday, but third and fourth down is really where quarterbacks make money. And, you know, he certainly wasn't perfect all day. There's some throws he'd probably want back. But when you just talk about executing on those critical downs, Really, really good player yesterday. Got the fullback in now. We talked about this as well. The defensive line for the Chicago Bears isn't that good, so they're going to have to slant. They're going to bring their linebackers down to the side. So they're going to slant from uh, the bottom of the screen to the north or to the top, bring linebackers down. The problem is if you catch them in a slant, like if you're running a gap scheme, for example, they're going to have a real problem. So everybody slants down, and now all we have to do is make sure Eldon Jenkins takes here at Tremaine Edmonds, which he does here, and you're out the gate. Right, eight yard pickup, no problem. This is I wanted to, I wanted to show. I mean, this is why you know Aaron Jones is such a special player. So you got second and three, and they run. Just completely gaggle this up. Deguara gets. I think it's Deguara gets smashed by the. Uh, by the, the crashing defensive end. They're running another gap scheme. They're pulling the guard. And the way that Jones just bounces this out and manages to pick up the, the three yards, I mean, this is just a special play from a special player. This is, this is, you know, from a defensive standpoint, when you look at the linebackers and defensive backs on, on the Chicago Bears, they're all good. They're all very, very good players. And if they're not good players now, they're certainly going to be good players. But that's just a special play by a special player. So we got first and 10. Again, they're doing their little slant. And we already talked about it when they slant and you catch him. It's just opportunities for big plays. This is the problem with running the slant game, especially when you know that it's going to be consistently happening. Like, in other words, if you're watching tape on this team and you see them slanting all the time, you're going to pick up tips and tells. They have calls. I guarantee you the Green Bay Packers have calls. They see this up front. They're like, oh, it's going to be a big play, right? Because it's you're going to get the back on the safety. You get the back on the safety, it's up to him. We got third and two. Now, this is Myers doing a good job of going downhill and attacking this player. Now, could he square him up a little bit more? Whatever. 
Jones knows he makes a mistake here. He needs to follow this. He needs to follow the center. He cuts in, makes a play. He looks up at Myers right here and says, Hey, my bad. All right. Good block by Myers. Everyone was going, Oh, you know, what's the problem? Made a good block. If he stays outside, he's got a touchdown. We go first and goal. And we talk about AJ here. And AJ is a 250 pound player running sideline to sideline for the first two plays that he gets the ball. I, I don't get it. A lot of people don't get it. It happened a lot last year. You know, they were always talking about wanting to run it behind your pads with a guy like Dylan. He needs momentum. But it's like, why put him on the edge then? Um, right here, Myers. Mrs. Tremaine Edmonds. I'll go back to the snap so we can make, make it a little more obvious. So right here, the center is going to make a decision to pull because he has to get to the play side linebacker. It's a hard ask, but you really have to pull tight around the outside block here. So Elgin Jenkins decides to go up. Now, maybe maybe Jenkins is supposed to go to the linebacker. I know he's not. He's supposed to go to the, the, the force player. And, and Myers is supposed to go to the linebacker. And he just gets undercut. This happened to me against uh, Jeremiah Trotter when we were playing Philly in, in 2003. Like, it happens sometimes, but not a good look, especially when AJ is trying to get, you know, get something going. So we got third and goal. And the Bears are just playing zone coverage. And because we release Aaron Jones into the flat, Aaron's going to essentially take two. He's going to take uh, the corner who's sitting – on, on Dobbs right now. And he's also going to take the slot nickel out to the flat. And what that does is that leaves Dobbs for a double move on the safety. Jordan's got tons of time in the pocket here. I mean, this is what you're talking about. There's just nobody near him. That is a absolutely perfect pocket. Great job by the offensive line. Easy pitch and catch. You cannot give a good wide receiver in the National Football League you know, three, four seconds to get open in that kind of space on one-on-one. -on -one. It's just not going to happen. Now, I, I put this out earlier. Chase Claypool's a guy that they want. They were talking about picking up, and we were happy, you know, I think on this show that they didn't for a number of reasons. Uh, I've never seen – this. I'm not going to sit here and bash the guy the whole game, but it it's really sticks out uh, about the kind of effort that, that people are putting in to win games for you. There's one, just runs right past Quay Walker. doesn't even try to hit him. You know, while we're, while we're looking at this play – this is a San Francisco 49ers play. We're going to bring the, the tight end from the other side of the ball. See Komet. Now he's going to insert between like the guard and the tackle. And basically what they're saying is if the, if this guy's tackle is going to go hard at the defensive end, if the defense end, end does anything but plays outside, then the tight end is just going to pick him up. Tackle is going to keep going. Okay. But it's all predicated on your wide receiver. Well, it's predicated on two things. One, your guard being able to handle the defensive tackle on his own, which he doesn't in this case. I think Devontae White does a really good job of penetrating and making sure that that running back has to go east and west, not north and south. And then, you know, Quay's not the most physical guy in the world, but, I mean, come on, man. You got to put something on him. That's a terrible job by that wide receiver. Great job by that Packers defense. We got first and 20. This is the other thing. The poor Chicago Bears, man. They just can't get out of their own way. How many drives started first and 15, first and 20? So this was a play that could have been. I love the kid from University of Tennessee. Now he gets humped right here by Wyatt and then ends up grabbing Wyatt's armpit and throwing him on the ground. That should have been a holding call. But here we go, Jair. Bang. <laughs> love it. Love the little extra. They turn it over on downs. Second and 10 here. This is what we're talking about with AJ, okay? Someone's got to block. Now, they brought in Yannick Nagakwe, and he was a was a great player in this league. Honestly, he's really become a pass rush specialist the last couple of years. He ends up with tackles for loss in this game, sacks. You're just going, what? You know, he only goes upfield. This isn't rocket science. All you got to do is crack block him right here. We don't do it. We just let him run free. We do a quick toss. Like, I don't know if they think that AJ is going to make a miss. I don't, I mean, we're lucky this isn't a, we're lucky this isn't a tackle for loss with a fumble, with a turnover. That's how bad this play was. I think we'll see it one more time. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, they're not thinking that Elton Jenkins is going to be able to get out there because that's asinine. Here's another play. Darnell Savage just setting the tone. 
beating the screen block right through him, taking the guy out, just being physical, man. It's it's not like we're not playing patty cake out here either. He's throwing his body around. You know, he's 198 pounds soaking wet, but he runs a 4.38. He's using it. He's trying to be a bullet. I love it. Love the way he played. Love the swagger. Rasul Douglas the same. Both those guys played with a lot of energy. This right here is unbelievable. I mean, this is the Justin Fields stuff. You just can't can't figure. I mean, we had four sacks. We could have had nine. Now, this is what I'm talking. I'll bet you when Jay, I'm being honest with you, and Jay Alexander is not afraid of anybody, but I bet you when they call this play, I bet you this is what used to happen with like our guys when they had to go play against Dante Culpepper and the Vikings. I bet you when they call this play, he's going, What the hell am I going to do when I get there? Because honestly, you know, Fields has him by 40, 50 pounds, 40 pounds at least, right? And he's elusive. It's like, what are you going to do? So, okay, so you, you brought the corner. Great. All you did is give me an opportunity to go run, which I'm the best at. I, I'd make the guy sit in the pocket and throw. So it goes to first and 10. Now we run the TE stunt. So we bring our guys inside, get walled off. Nice little run for them. Got to get Quay. Got to get Quay to fight off these blocks, be more aggressive, be first to the punch, and not make those tackles 8, 10 yards downfield. Okay. This is we've we've shown a play like this, kick play, a thousand times on this show. Chicago Bears are essentially trying to fold everybody down towards the arrow, and we're basically betting that Rasul Douglas can't make this tackle, or he's going to make this tackle five, six, seven yards in the backfield. He does a great job flattening this guy out, making the play in line of scrimmage. That's a big time play. That's the kind of plays that you don't necessarily get last year, and you got him sometimes, but it just seemed like yesterday, for whatever reason. The emphasis has been on we're going to make tackles. We're going to be the physical dominating dominating uh, defensive group that we can be. Rasul Douglas did a great job yesterday setting the tone as well. You just see this here and you go, I, I just don't even understand how he got free. Kid's special. Sean Gary here. Going to get one. Ah! Now they called a hold on this play. But it just, I, you have to appreciate how elusive the kid is. He really is something else. All right, I think we got another magic moment from Claypool. Watch this. Love it. Oh, gosh. Goodness gracious. All right. We'll talk about, you know, one thing that we can work on with, with Quay. We talked about this last year. So Van Ness is going to duck inside the tackle, meaning that he's going to take the B gap, which means the linebacker's got to fill for the C outside. But he's waiting for contact instead of attacking that lineman and getting to the outside and closing down this hole, okay, or at least forcing this flat where he has help with Jerry Alexander. But when you, when you catch, when you receive, instead of become the aggressor, the attacker, these are the kind of plays that can happen. Really got to work on this in particular because people are going to, are going to see this and go, we can really take advantage of this kid. Another good rush. Another great job by Darnell Savage. Here we go. Another killer play here by our man Claypool. I mean, just absolutely gets walked through. What a job by, uh, by Nixon there. Love watching that stuff, man. It's so much fun to watch. Okay. First half's done. They come out. Listen, I I, the, I think the the thing was Aaron Jones got five carries in the first series, and they didn't get another carry for the rest of the half. And you know, everyone's going like, you know, I think everybody and, and every fan, every everybody who knows anything about football is going. I think we give it to our best player again. What does that sound like, guys? So, anyways, they come out in the second half, and that's exactly what they do. Now, I could run through this lane. This is such a good job by David Bakhtiari and Elgin Jenkins of creating space. Look at that push. Okay, backside B. Gets up, back to Ari, drive, 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 drives the guy back to the nine yard past the line of scrimmage, nine yards past the line of scrimmage. Excellent job, excellent effort. We got young man at the point of attack against Nagakwe. Now, Nagakwe is only like 255, 260, okay? So, this is a matchup that we're going, if you can just do this, like, because all the other stuff you're going to be, able, I'm talking about Musgrave now. And Tucker Craft, but Musgrave, I mean, you just got all the other stuff you're going to be able to do in the passing game. How much 
you know, all the different ways we can utilize you. If you can just put your hand in the ground every once in a while and be at the point of attack so we don't have to run split flow, so we don't have to run all this to keep Pat, blah, 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 blah. We could just run an offense. This is awesome because now you've got that extra fullback in on this third key third down play or second down play. We get the third down on the quarterback sneak. But that's all we need from him. We don't need him to dominate. We don't need him to be Mercedes Lewis. We need him to be comparable. Now, talking about the fullback. What the fullback gives you, and this is why teams are going back to it, because you still have this, you have what looks like a seven-man, maybe even call it an eight-man box with a safety coming down. But the way that they're set up, play side, if we're doing a play side lead to the left, with a tight end, then you're going to essentially have a fullback just to clean up. So if the tight end doesn't have a great block, if the tackle and the, and the guard somehow let that guy get outside, like he's got a free hole to run through and the tackle back there is working up to Edmonds anyways. So really you're just going to get two hands on Edmonds, right? You're going to, you're guaranteeing yards. It's a great play. Well-designed, well-executed. Got second and three, keep pass. This is probably the play of the day, honestly, from an offensive standpoint. Lyman do a great job of getting out of there, getting in the way. Great call. That was a U Bacon, by the way. Let's look at uh, I think Rasheed Walker's in here. Go back. There he is. There's the big man. We got Rasheed Walker hipped off like a tight end. So we're bringing in the U71 bacon package. Slightly more athletic than bacon. Not nearly as handsome. Gets all the way down there. Up. Oh. So this actually should have been a touchdown for AJ. They fire their corner. They fire their corner here. So we got Elton Jenkins pulling. He's, he wants to pull up and lead either on the safety or the outside backer. He sees this guy late and just, I just need to get in the way. And he does what he does here is he doesn't block anybody, but he saves this play. This is a really, really good play by Jenkins, even though you look at it and go, he didn't block anybody. He made sure that this play was not made in the backfield. Excellent job. So DeGuara just leads up and Dylan almost gets in. Two plays later, I think Aaron Jones pops one in here from a yard out. We actually don't even block the defensive or the, uh, the safety here. This is. But anyways, okay. Another play of the game, maybe the maybe the maybe a bigger one in the terms of developing Jordan Love. So we have a a, a trips right. You got a single receiver out to the left, but you have the back Aaron Jones outside the left on the left tackle lined up. So you really it's a three by two. You're going man coverage. We talked about it before. Chicago's gonna like to play single safety high, especially in short order situations. They'll play man, they'll they'll play man and match. Tremaine Edmonds is sitting here going, okay, what do we run in short yardage situations out of trips? Well, they're going to run two up, one underneath, right? So they're going to run the quick slant on the outside, and they're going to run some sort of combination of outside or, or vertical routes on the inside, or they might run a, a triple slants. So he's looking over there anyways. He sees the slant and breaks on it, and we just run the Texas route on the backside. The Texas is just you know, you're faking like you go out, come back in. Will Henderson, Amon Green, these guys made this play famous. Dorsey Levins made this play famous 20 years ago. And it's, Katie, it's you know, out the gate. And you're not going to catch this kid. He's just a special, special guy. Pulls up. Ah! Got a little got a little spider bite there on the hamstring. But so it goes up. Here we go. All effort team. I mean, I'm pointing this out because, you know, it's such a it's such a privilege to play in the National Football League. It's such an honor to play in the National Football League. And some people think that it's their right or right of passage. I'm not sure. But if you're a receiver and this is what you're putting on tape over and over again, I mean, you got to have some kind of talent. And by the way, Darnell Savage, again, making a play. Maybe this guy's afraid of him. I don't know. Darnell Savage making plays, running right through that could have been blocked by Claypool. This guy's just an elusive cat, but really we get a sack and a half from uh, 
Wyatt and a half sack from from Kenny Clark. So one of the one of the splits is right here, and they both get. I don't know how they call this a, a, a half a fumble each, but phenomenal job. Pressured all day, really. Just talking about Justin Fields. Quay, be physical, man. This is what we're talking about. This is what we need. Just be physical. Right here. Use your hands. This is your 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 receiving contact. You want to you want to instigate contact. You want to attack the attacker. Rudy <laughs> Rudy Ford gets absolutely blown up here, but props to Rudy Ford, man. Like everybody gets everybody gets you know lit up every once in a while, dude. He got lit up by this young kid, and then made this play. Still made the damn play. Look at it. Still made the damn play. <sighs> Rudy Ford's tough. Okay, I miss the old days. Now, this is Jay Alexander, and I think this is our, our guy Claypool. And if this was 20 years ago, Claypool is not walking off the field. And I miss it a little bit. I'm going to be honest with you. Jared is a good, he gets a good look at him, no doubt. No doubt. But I just miss the old days. And I think the last one I got here is the pick. Quay. Reads it all the way, reading the eyes. Look at 23 here. 23. First of all, just quit. As you watch this, and you, you know, it's easy to talk about when you when you, you know stop everything. But does Quay even know the guy's right there? He doesn't look like he's looking at him. And then at the last minute, he goes, I, I better tuck this thing under. Bounces off like a pinball, runs through. And then the I mean the big fella here hits him pretty good, actually. Uh, Darnell Wright. But look, great one for the pack. And you can just see there's there's there feels like there's something a little bit different about the defense. And I'm going to say that, one, I think that Rashawn Gary being back just gives everybody more confidence. Two, I think that Darnell Savage really, like, really set a tone yesterday. And I, I hope he can continue and continue to build on that um, because I just think it's – We've talked about alley tackling. We've talked about you know, the, the 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 extra yards that teams are, have gotten over the last couple of years because of missed tackles, poor tackling. And yesterday was just – you know, it wasn't perfect, but it was really, really good. But the physical tone that you said is so important. I did have – I did have three kind of what I just like to call area of opportunities, not deficiencies, area of opportunities. The first one is on offense. We just showed two of them. You got to find A.J. Dillon's plays early. Like, okay, we can he can wear the defense down. And, you know, he's good and cold. Wet. The, but you you got to think about it, A.J. Dillon. A.J. Dillon's going, dude, I don't want to run this play again if you guys aren't going to block it. Like, I just want to run downhill. I'm pretty good at that. And I feel like because he's so athletic sometimes, they're like, let's run outside zone. Let's run the toss. Let's, you know, let's run these things that maybe really aren't in his – Maybe they're either not in his wheelhouse or, as we saw, they just weren't blocked very well for whatever reason. Why don't we just do a double-double, put, you know, that double-double is we got two double teams up front. Let him run off that, go downhill on a linebacker. I know Edmonds lit him up yesterday. I didn't want to put it on the tape. But he's generally pretty good at that stuff. It's the kind of the way to get yourself involved in the game, though, right? Either get or give a really good hit early in the game. Get downhill, get your legs, get your legs moving. So think about that. Number two, and this kind of goes along with it, you need to figure out what your offensive identity identity is. We need to be able to enforce our will on offense, meaning that – and Christian Watson's not there right now. We don't know really where how everything's going to play out. Is Jalen Reed going to be a, a primary guy? Is Dobbs going to be the primary guy? Secondary, how, all of that. We know that our offensive line is pretty good. Zach Tom coming in. Zach Tom, you didn't – I don't think you mentioned his name once yesterday. He played a, he played a good game. Our offensive line is pretty good. Aaron Jones is really good. Jordan Love seems to be um, a player that we can go. We could certainly build this team around. He had a good out. He didn't have a perfect out. And there's again, there's some throws you, you'd want back. Blah 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 blah. But he made plays. He man, he did a good job of managing this game. You need to be able to enforce your will on teams and whether that's running downhill and getting the offensive line to be kind of the, the stewards of the culture of the offense along with AJ and, and Aaron, whether that's dropping back and, and 
you know, the combinations of, of speed and precision from Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson, and then what we bring from the tight end room now, whatever it is, it needs to be, I need a, I need a gimme play. I'm dialing one of these 10 plays up that we can always get yards on 96 power load, for example, 93 blast, 97 stutter, you know, 98 handoff solid back when we used to run. I mean, these Fox two X, Y hook. Okay. Hound two, buck. you know, H two buck, like these play, you call them like we're getting yards. That's what's happening. They need those plays. They need to figure out what those are post Aaron Rodgers. And then the third thing, and this is the, the one thing I kept looking at on defense, I brought it up a couple of times, still need to get Quay Walker to play smash mouth football, attack the attacker, because you, you need to complement the play of the defensive line. And, and I probably am saying this a little bit biased because I think before I watched this game in depth, I, I just watched the Baltimore Ravens play defense. And the way that Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen play defense is just unique. They are Roquan Smith in particular. They're both really, really, they're just special. And they just fly around. I mean, Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, they're both, they're doing some like matrix stuff out there. Okay. But they're physical. They throw their bodies around everywhere. We need that kind of mentality from that position, maybe a little bit more so, a little more intensity level than we're getting right now. So those are my go tos. And now we had some fan questions I just wanted to hit. Um, first fan question how did Myers do? He did a he didn't whiff. He whiffed on the on the pull. Uh, um, there was a, some protection issues where Love had to get rid of the ball quickly because a guy slipped between him and JRJ. Whose fault it is, I can't really tell on this on this tape. Uh, you know, he got pulled pushed back on the first snap. It's just uh there's there's gonna come a point, and hopefully he's building and building confidence, building momentum. But there certainly will come a point where enough is enough. But I don't like as you look at the rosters construct right now, you're not moving Zach Tom. And if you're not moving Zach Tom, you're not moving anybody else because that is the least important position on the offensive line in terms of physically what needs to get accomplished. The most important cerebrally, am I saying that cerebrally? Cere cere uh, cerebrally, I think it's a word, but least important from a, a physical standpoint. So he moves well. You saw him get out with Aaron Jones where Aaron Jones said, my bad. He does a lot of things really well. Just needs to continue to clean it up. Right. And again, we have a little bit of time. The defense is going to play like it is. We're playing the Falcons next week. They're not like a, a you know, powerhouse. Uh, what post game hot takes have you shaken your head? I, I, I could probably go on forever. Uh, the one that there's two that I had one, uh, the Cowboys defense obviously beat the ever living out of the New York giants last night. But I kind of look at that as, you know, some bad things happen. And then you've got this poor this kid out of Alabama, Evan Neal, the, the first the fifth pick in the draft last year, is just not playing very good football. He played bad football last year. He's playing bad football right now. And what starts to happen is it gets into the, the brain of everybody who's playing. So like Daniel Jones, it's wet outside. There's a lot of pressure coming from the right. Do we need to change protection? Am I hot? I mean, all these bad things start happening. They're very, very good. I would I would guess that because Demarcus Lawrence and, and Michael Parsons are the best that they have, I think, on defense. And I think Bakhtiari is going to be able to handle Michael Parsons. I mean, I think Demarcus Lawrence is, is probably the better pass rusher of the two. Um, but Zach Tom, you know, in time, I think is is going to be able to handle those kind of elite level players. Uh, especially if you, you know, throw in a chip, if you throw in a tight end block, et cetera. And I think there's some really, really good defenses out there. I think San Francisco's defense is incredible. I think the New England Patriots defense is incredible. I think you caught – the Giants caught the, the – excuse me, the Cowboys caught the Giants on the worst possible night. They are very, very good, though. And then the other thing I keep – you know, Jimmy Garoppolo just gets – you know, Jimmy Garoppolo had lunch with a porn star, I think, in San Francisco one time, and his career has just kind of been written off since then. Yesterday, he's playing the Denver Broncos. He – you know, they don't score a ton of points. He goes 20 for 26, 200 yards, two touchdowns, one interceptions against a really good Denver passing defense for the for the Las Vegas Raiders. Jimmy G can play football, man. Like it, if whoever's saying he's like a mid-tier guy, he's he's not he's not, you know, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes elite, but he's in that conversation of, you know, is he seven to twelve? He's a good player, man. I just I never understood. With how many guys are getting paid a ton of money to to not go to the playoffs, to not win playoff games, and you just see like this guy keeps he just keeps winning every time he's healthy, he's winning. So, 
Here's another question. Was dominance in the trenches our good or their bad? This is a good question, and I think it's a little bit of both. I think the answer is yes. I think we do have an offensive line because of Zach Tom kind of fortifying that right tackle position. I think our And I think the style of football we're going to play, I think our offensive line is going to uh, do quite well this year. I, are they a top five team offensive line? I don't know, but they're definitely top ten. Especially if Bakhtiari is healthy, they're definitely top ten. He's just that good, right? He's that good for everybody else. Force, force multiplier, something we talk about all the time with him. But they're really bad on defense, the Chicago Bears. They they, have, they got rid of Gibson uh, for the final cuts. He was their best pass rusher because they got rid of uh, they got rid of uh, you know Robert Quinn during the season last year. Like they don't have anybody who can rush the passer. It's crazy. That's maybe since the Denver Broncos of like 1999. I can't recall a team that just didn't have a pass rusher. Like this team does not have a pass rusher. It's nuts. Their best pa- their best chance is to send one of the linebackers. Um, offensive, their offensive line. I think the rookie is going to be good. He got beat up, you know, a couple times yesterday, but it's going to be tough with that quarterback and that situation. Always going to be down. It's going to be difficult. But their offensive line is not very good. Uh, their defensive line's arguably the worst in the, in the league. So it'll be interesting to see when they go up against a better line. I know that, uh, you know, in particular, three technique for Atlanta next year, next week is going to give us fits. Um, impressions of Devontae White and, and Lucas Van Ness. Listen. Both had sacks. Van Ness had a great hustle sack. I, what you see, let me start with Van Ness because he's easy, right? He, he, he's first game, doesn't have a lot of moves, plays with incredible intensity and power. You can see the athleticism. He changes Justin Fields down, change the direction. Like he's going to, he's just going to be good because he's just a good athlete and he plays hard. Like it's like football is not that difficult, guys. Like if you're a really good athlete and you play really hard, you're going to be at the very minimum, like your floor is good. Now your ceiling could be excellent, great, superb, all pro, hall of fame, but your but your floor, if you just if you fulfill those two things, you're gonna be good. Because there's not that many guys who actually work that hard. And the kid works hard every single snap. Wyatt last year was playing too high, speed of the game, all this. He he didn't he dominated on some snaps. He was in the backfield a lot again, again against a bad offense line, but he was still in the you still got to make the plays. I love the way that they're running him and Kenny Clark together. They run a couple of games off one another. Um, he just looked fluid, much more fluid. I think that's the word I want to use than last season. And so if he's getting that bump up, uh, you know, if he's been learning from Kenny and trying to bring it every down, you know, they do a good job of rotating those guys. They, they have a hand. Wooten plays well. Slayton played well. Like the, all those guys played well. So, It'll be interesting to see in, in the weeks to come, but I was really – you have to be encouraged by both those guys. I think you really have to be encouraged by Devontae Wyatt just because it seemed that he made uh, he made more more of his opportunities this year. He just seemed like the game was was within his wheelhouse to, con- to control his little area of, of, of space out there on, on the grass. And then I think we already talked about it. You said you want throwback. I love to see that. Absolutely love to see it. So that's all we got this week, guys. Um, if you're enjoying this, please subscribe and review on the show. Thank you for uh, for Betterline AG for sponsoring this show. And again, you can find me at MikeWall68 uh, on Twitter. You can find me at process to perform on Instagram. I also am going to be doing a, a uh, preview show for the Falcons on Thursday. I'm going to try to get somebody from the Falcons lane, but we'll definitely get some tape up for that. So everybody enjoy. Have a good week until then.